Salut everyone and welcome back to another episode of Victoria 2 Heart of Darkness. We are playing another episode of series and nations that no one else wants to play on the internet. And I am here to tell you why they don't want to play the series on the internet. Because I have to. And today's nation of choice is Luxembourg. Luxembourg, Luxembourg. How I love Luxembourg. How I love how it just rounds out my usual German empire. Oh, yeah. And that basically describes the mood of this Let's Play, probably. So, basically, guys, um... I know you guys did vote on me to play another African nation. Don't worry, I'll get... I'll eventually do all of Africa, eventually. But, for right now, I want to get... I want to be a little bit fair to, like, the regions and stuff. And I'm going to do one European nation. So, I decided to do Luxembourg. And... Um, you know, this is something I usually don't say, but I honestly think these guys are worse than Tunis in terms of stuff you can actually do. Because, you know, I was thinking, like, instantly, okay, okay, maybe, you know, I'm going to be able to get an alliance with France in the beginning and then, you know, be able to get, get Brussels. Because right now we're in the region of Walney, and we need to get the rest of Brussels so that we can... Or the west of Walney, the region of Walney, so we can start building some good factories. And that way we also have a good population. Because right now our population is not the highest. That's scary population. Like, wow, our total is only 176k. That's really scary. But um, what I realized is we're actually a satellite of the Netherlands. Yeah, you see? See? So, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm just going to wait here. And encourage, let's see, how's our administration level? Oh, come on, this, we only have one region, how do we not have like 100%? Uh, okay. Let's increase the bureaucrats in this place. And look at, this is this our only region, so we have 40, we're 59% French, and we're 40% North German, and ironically, North German is our primary culture. <laughs> okay, so anyways, yeah, it seems like, it seems like I'm gonna have to wait a long, long time to like break away from, I'm first gonna have to break away from the Netherlands and then I'm gonna have to declare my own separate war for this region right here and then maybe we can start a good Luxembourg campaign but um yeah we're just gonna, I'm just gonna have to wait here so I mean there's really not much to really tell about this nation we have you know just the usual tech that you start out with um I'm gonna be, can I research idealism yet, don't really need national thought what I probably need, not even experimental railroads, I just need something that would help my population boom. Medicine. Medicine would help that. If I remember quick. No, it wasn't medicine. It was... Don't need a colonial migration. Though, I want... Hypothetically speaking, I could probably get my list up to all the way to 100%. And then just like, tech past everyone. Could be just like, awesome, but... Dang it, I don't remember which one increased immigration. Alright, anyways, I will go with the medicine, no, not the medicine, the, uh, romanticism, because we do want to try to keep ourselves in 61th place as a civilized power. It is one good thing it does have over a ton or so, is it is a civilized power, but it's, <laughs> I can build one troop, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to build a soldier, it's a regular soldier, and we're going to try to see if we can keep that alive. Um, economically wise, I have not tested this, so let's see. Let's see how our eco economics are doing. Oh my goodness, we are dying. Well, that's only because I'm not taxing my people to the utmost. Tax! Tax! And I really don't care if I, if I kill this population, because I'm pretty sure... You know, I wonder if I could just completely wipe out Luxembourg. Like, just completely. Oh, uh, okay, that, wait, wait, that's not the point of this Let's Play. The point of this Let's Play is actually play this. So, yeah, it seems like I just evened out our economy, and I think we could... I think I could probably do this. So, everyone, I'm going to do my first cut right here. Uh, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so our first mighty Luxembourg army has made its first troop. It's named the first Luxembourg army. I'm going to name it Phil. Phil. Okay. And has no leaders and absolutely no morale. Great start. And our economy went, to, went bad. Great start. Uh, almost want to tear up everyone to bits, but we're, we're civilized power, so that actually would be bad. Uh, we'll have to decrease militaristic spending. We'll probably have to decrease this too, because I'm not making enough. Why do I even need? I don't even need sea power right now. 
Can we get that off? Oi. Oh, bye. This will probably take all of the tarot. Yeah. You know what? Why not? Let's tear our people out of this. So, anyways, guys, I think that's about it. I think that's all I need to bring you guys in for. So, yeah, I'll cut to the next break. So, see you guys in about five years, I think. So, see you guys then. Hey, guys, I'm bringing you guys back now at this point in time. And I want to tell you that basically nothing happened in the last five years I played this. So, I'm probably going to start skipping, like, every ten years. But, anyways, um... Out of the few stuff that has happened, we finished like three technologies in this amount of time. I'm starting to go on market structure, um, because why was I going on market structure again? Oh yeah, because I was trying to increase my mining and farming output to see if I can get a little bit more money. Because right now we're doing, I'm doing okay in terms of money. I mean, I've gotten my tariffs down to zero again, and half of my people are actually have luxurious needs met. Which usually never happens, if, if you guys know me long enough, you guys know that usually never happens to any of my people. I usually have my taxes to the point, usually my, usually my pie chart looks like this. It usually looks like this, but it looks pretty nice right now, I feel so happy. And, yeah, we had a soldier be made, he's pretty awesome. Um, with a 19th power in the world, which is, by all means, just really stupid, because really all I did was just like, use prestige which means all I did was just talk about myself constantly to all the other great powers until they started believing all my like BS stories about how great Luxembourg is so that's how I became that's how that happened and politically we are now the, we are now the liberal faction because you know what they offer a good bonus to economics and that's what we need right now um, basically I've realized with the current events at least I can curve this to just any way I want because like usually in the region usually in regular Victoria 2 you usually have like multiple regions so it would usually give you an event for like multiple regions like you know if I was France I'd use Ile de France is like does it want to become more atheist and then it'll, it'll make the uh, Morales mad or you know Charlemagne or not Charlemagne Provence Provence you know Provence is trying is trying to separate religion from from politics should we do this and you can say yes or no and for 30% and yeah yeah but with this all it does is just give me one event for this region constantly so all I need to do is just I, I basically curve the entire entire I ideology of these people to almost be 64% liberal and I guarantee if I really tried I could probably curve it to be a hundred percent by the end of this which I think is what I'm gonna do because the liberals would actually fit my goal in this game um what else I realized while well, I was just like sitting here doing nothing for the last five years um, I've also realized that apparently Germany, the great, I can make the German Empire. Of course, I would call it the Great Luxembourgian Empire, but yes, I can make Germany. Which then also gives me this map mode, which seems like I could actually, like, do it. You know, after I beat Prussia, beat Bavaria, beat Hannenberg, and then beat Austria somehow. You know, after I beat all that, then I can form, I can form the Great Lux Luxembourgian Empire. But, yeah. It, it seems quite possible, I think. It seems very quite possible. Um, diplomatically, I haven't really been doing much because I haven't really gotten to anyone's. I haven't really gotten to anyone's bad side. Um, I'm still waiting for the Netherlands to make a mistake somewhere so that I can get out. I finally figured out how to uh, free myself from the Netherlands. Just have to go into diplomatic mode and then go to declare war and be become independent. That's all I have to do, and then I just have to win a war against them, and I should be able to become independent. Now, will that actually succeed? Uh don't know but right now I do have I have been sphered by the mighty and friendly nation to Luxembourg France not friendly and not hostile and constantly conquers you every time in the game Germany um yeah maybe you know maybe I might be able to like use this to my advantage to like um like just make sure that Netherlands do not try does not try anything I don't know I don't know I'm just thinking out loud right now but anyways um I'm gonna do another cut right here and we'll see you guys in a bit bye bye alright guys so we have a pretty unique event for Luxembourg in this time of era and um I'll explain why it's funny in a second but support for the foreign abolitionism 
abolitionists in Luxembourg are arguing that the government should oppose slavery abroad and support foreign abolitionist movements. Supporting foreign dissidents is obviously not something that will make a popular popular with the country that is receiving end. So, basically for you guys who don't know, basically I'm saying no to slavery, I hate the idea of slavery anywhere, and I don't really like it. Now, that's all fine and all. You know, that's all fine with me and all that. But the problem is, with this entire event, is just... It kind of makes me think that this event was supposed to be meant for somebody of more power to us. Oh, by the way, I should mention, we are a great, we are a second day power to us. Yippee, but it's really only because I have lots and lots of prestige bonus. And I'm not losing that extra little 0 0.025 because I'm a great power. I'm a second day power. Anyways, though, um, this event was really meant for, like, a power like Portugal or, um... Or maybe Russia, or you know, anyone basically bigger than than me, and that has actual ports and colonies. I mean, heck, even Denmark could be considered what could be considered what it is. For me, though, this is just like a stupid event because the nation in question, guys, the nation in question that I'm opposing, uh, <laughs> I'm opposing uh, slavery in is uh Cambodia. Okay. Of course I'm going to click it because it gives me prestige, but imagine this. So you're Cambodia, right? You're, you're, you're Cambodia. All the way over here. All the way over here in so Southeast Asia. Just, you know, doing its own thing with its slaves, you know. You know, more th morals bes beside the point. You just do this thing because it's been tradition and everything. And all of a sudden, this little nation over here in Europe, not even really well spoken of amongst the own European theater, is telling you that you should stop slavery and that your stup that your ideals and their ways are stupid and that if you don't stop we're gonna come in and kick your butt with our may I add one soldier with our one soldier and then for Cambodia they have five soldiers at least and then they have an alliance with Denam which would give them a heck of a lot more than me even with them being an uncivilized power, they are still way stronger than me. Alright. So. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I, I, I don't know if Luxembourg was actually trying to stick its neck out to try to prove its dominance over someone. Just like, yeah, this is, innate, this is how I'm going to prove my, like usefulness to get with the other European powers and I don't know but that event was just really kind of like okay people we are a tiny nation that doesn't even really do anything and you know the North Germanic Federation formed right next to us we really gotta be worrying about that and then potentially trying to take us over then trying to be worrying about slavery in a land that we can't even get to like I, I don't know it, it just seems like really just a stupid situation to be in anyways I'll be cutting to another break. I'll see you guys in 1857. Hopefully, unless there's another event that happens before that. Okay, see you guys then. Uh, okay. I think I've had about enough of this campaign. It's... Surprisingly, I'm not quitting this campaign early because it was too hard or too stressful. No, it's the complete opposite. It was way too boring to be a Let's Play. Oh my goodness. So, it's review time, everyone. Yay! So, the big question is on everyone's mind is Is this a good series for YouTube? And with that becomes a couple things that you have to know Is, can you become a great power? Can you become number one? Being that great power Can you Basically take Luxembourg And have it be a fun let's play and how rage inducing is it? Well, let's start with the first one. Can you become a great power? No. I don't think so. Um, I don't think there is any possibility in the world that you could become a great power with Luxembourg. I mean, I just don't think so. And I bet a lot of people think, but why, James? Why? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, you just, one, you can't really do any, first of all, you're a puppet of the Netherlands, so. Before you even think about conquering any of these places, you're going to have to free yourself from Netherlands' sphere of influence. Which, by the way, is as hard as heck to do. 
Because the Netherlands, the Netherlands don't start losing their army up until this time. Like, this is about the time they start losing their army. But this is also a time where all the other great powers are starting to solidify their power. And, you know, this is about this is about the start of the bell curve when they start to, like, do the exponential growth where they get from, like, 1,000 to 7,000. So, it's really too late for you to, like, start to fight. And, honestly, their alliances would just kick your butt. Like, look at this. Look at that. But, the only way... The, I'm just telling you, this is all the plausible things that you'd have to do right to become a great power in this. You'd have to somehow win a war against, against the Netherlands, become independent, then go to war against Belgium, claim this region right here so that you can have a full region to actually do stuff. Wait a little bit, wait until, hopefully think that the, the uh, Germans have not formed North Germanic Federation, conquer a little bit of Germany, then you have to go back, maybe then conquer the rest of Belgium, then you go back and then you just have to sphere all these little states over here while fighting both. Prussia and Austria. It's yeah, and that's the only way I could actually see you sustaining being a great power as Luxembourg. But uh, other than that, it's hands down just really a lux. It's really just a luck one. I mean, it because you have to get if if you don't if if Netherlands if you can't fight against Netherlands and get that first step done, you're basically trapped like I am. Why well, I can't do anything except just watch as the world slowly turns to ashes. And I'd love to point out that Norway formed. Yay, there's always something that happens in Scandinavia when I play this Let's Play. There's always something. That's so that's so exciting, but yeah. I mean, you honestly will never have enough population for a factory. It's, it's just a simple fact. You just never will. You will never have enough technology to ever catch up to any of these great powers. Even with all the modifiers to, like, research and all that, you'll never have enough. Uh, Policy-wise, it doesn't really matter because you can't even really do anything, and... I mean, who's going to really rebel in Luxembourg? What would be the technical advantages to rebelling in Luxembourg? Hey, don't, don't see it. Just don't see it. And Providence crime rate, 79. That that's really should not be accurate because I got... I have 100% administration efficiency. How do we have any crime in this place? How? How do I have any crime? I'm a great... I'm a great law enforcer. I know how to enforce the law. But... Yeah, so for great power in this, it, it, as I've said before, almost anything is possible in this game. But is it probable? No. I don't think it's probable. It's definitely not probable. Possible? Yes. Probable? No. Alright. So then the question then becomes then, what do I, why do I want to play this nation? Well, you want to play this nation because you want to try to tip the odds and, you know, Make Luxembourg not that little nation that kind of rounds out your borders so it looks all pretty when you play the German Empire. But, to be honest with you, that's that's all I really see Luxembourg as, is. Is as a stepping stone for other nations, and... Wow. They aren't that technically in real life, but in real games, like most games like Hearts of Iron, Hearts of Iron 2, Darkest Hour, this game, they're mostly just stepping stones for other nations to just go in and conquer. It's just a simple facts, and when you're not conquering or being, when you're not being conquered by another nation, you're just waiting around to be conquered or to be bossed around by another nation. It's really quite a boring let's play. Just gonna flat out say, I had like fun, fun rating. I give this like a two out of ten, one out of ten, maybe. I might even give it one out of ten. I'll see about my rating skills, but this was just so dang boring that I am, oh yeah, I, I'm frankly just wanting to just go in and do some more stuff because it's like nothing you can do I mean this is even worse than my Tunis let's play because at least with Tunis I had some fun with like you know ooh can I survive against a friend so you know ooh by the way Tunis did get conquered in this let's play that's kinda funny <laughs> that's kinda funny exactly what happened to me too exactly what happened to me but you know I at least had some of that kinda going through me but with this it's just you're stuck you honestly cannot do anything there's not really room for expansion there's not really room for building an economy there's not really room for anything. The only thing I think you can do that's really productive is you can try to build your prestige, but that only goes so far before you did the other stuff like an industry and a good militaristic. That's the other thing, is that you can't build a military. You're basically you're basically stuck with one soldier the entire time, which makes it extremely hard if you're gonna try to like do an independence war with with the Netherlands. That was another reason why I don't think a Netherlands war for independent yourself from the Netherlands is ever gonna work is because you only have one soldier. One soldier, and there are no mercs in this where you can like buy more and like you know hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you know survive. 
No, you basically have one soldier, and that one soldier is all you get throughout the entire game. And honestly, this one guy would not be able to conquer all of this in a good timely manner. This would probably take him... Conquer each one of these regions would probably take you about... Ten years at least. At least ten years. And then... And then probably then Netherlands would give up. If, you know, like, the other big allies, like maybe Germany, Russia, or Spain, had, or France, had not come in and already tried to squash you out. Because it wouldn't be that hard. You just need to take one region, and you're gone. Which, the one region system really affects me in this. This is... I, I've never really said it on camera, but I hate the one re I hate the region system in this game. It's, it's honestly stupid. Like, it, it's honestly legitly stupid. Because, you know, in theory it makes sense, you know, you want to kind of group all the factories up into the specific, like, areas of, like, um, resource-dependent de stuff. And you want to make sure that, that, you know, region can get factories, you want to make sure that region can get stuff, and yada yada yada. But when you break it down, when you break it down, it only works for, like, bigger nations, and even then it doesn't really work. Because for me, like, as Luxembourg, I'm stuck within the, um, I'm not my own little region. So, you know, I don't get much population boost or anything. I don't really get to contribute to my overall region's, like, power because I'm not that region. And it honestly doesn't make any difference what I do in this region or what I do because this will never actually do what I want to do. I mean, there's probably some factories in this region right now that I have, but I'm not being able to use it because of other regions. Uh, but... I don't know. The region system, I could go on about why I don't like it. And why I think that it also kind of destroys the point of, like, nationality and stuff. Because it means that to gain, to, like, get a certain place, you have to actually conquer the entire region. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Because if we were really going by Victoria 2 style standards, you would just take what you want. Like, I, personally, I, personally, I really wish they just, like, did it, like, EU3 where you could just, like, take one region at a time and... Maybe like in every single region there was like two factory slots. That way you wouldn't have to be, and it just destroyed the regions. Or maybe regions were just like a fancy way to like look at the map. Regions were just a fancy way to look at a map and maybe different nations you could form. Maybe that's what you could use region in, regions as. But you would not use it as a, you would not use it as they are doing it now. We have to group different places in different regions and you know kind of constrict the player in a sense in that overall arcane side but you know if they just did it, like every single region has to have it can have two factories you know then it kind of mirrors like the actual industrial revolution you know like places had different things and you could actually build more and you can actually do more and you actually your economy is much more versatile but no they did it this way and we're stuck with it <laughs> so yeah that's that that was not supposed to be a part of this little review but there you guys go you got you got a little bit of opinion out of me of why of why I think of why I think the region system is kind of stupid in this but anyways um final thing I guess funness one rage inducing this isn't even rage inducing I give it like a negative five or zero that's just I'm not gonna go into negatives because if I start going to negatives then oh my goodness that could become complex later down the way especially when I start doing nations like um Actually, I think I probably hit the bottom of the mill right here. I, I don't think I'm going to get any other nation more boring than Luxembourg. I'm, I'm sorry, Luxembourg, but you guys you guys are just straight up boring. I mean, I had no fun. It was not rage-inducing. I mean, for a campaign to be fun, it has to be just slightly bit of rage-inducing. Like, there has to be some kind of challenge that, you know, is overcoming. Like, you can actually overcome it. With this, it's just like, you know you're not going to be able to overcome it. You know you're not going to be able to do anything. So you just sit there and just watch time fly. Which, I guess if you were doing like a, you know, time lapse of the years, years and like watching the world change, this would be actually kind of fun to watch. So you, you know you're not going to do much the entire time as Luxembourg. So you just like relax, chill back, and just see the world go to flames. Or, but... For me, I actually want to do something. Maybe, like, conquer Belgium or something. You know, something crazy like that, but I can't. I just can't, so... Anyways, yeah. That's my final verdict. Uh, just so you guys know... It's not fun for YouTube. This would not be a good Let's Play for YouTube. It's not. Repeat, not. 
a good let's play for YouTube. You will not find, you, you will never find use for this. This will not be one of those ones where people will be like tuning in every single thing or 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 coming in or anything like that. They will not come in. I I would honestly I would quit the I would just tell the YouTuber straight out saying, dude, you need to stop this. This let's this was a stupid idea. I know you have a you know your heart's in the right place for trying to do something new and new and you you unique but this is not the way this is not the way so anyways I'm about done you guys I'm probably gonna upload this today so you guys will get this episode and you guys get to see one of the possibly most boringest one let's plays that I've ever done so anyway guys thank you guys for watching um please don't forget to vote for your next nation you want me to play as and I'm gonna put a restriction here I still don't want to do an African nation just yet, so try to pick something in Asia, okay? Try to pick something in Asia that I can do, that I can try to become a great power in, okay? Okay, so anyways guys, thank you guys for watching, don't forget to vote, seriously don't forget to vote, I seriously mean that, don't forget to vote, I mean it, don't forget to vote, okay, you got it in your head, you got it ingrained in your head, so don't forget to vote. And I'll see you guys next time.